Thank you for joining us today. My name is Andrea McEwen Henderson, and I'm the National Account Manager with College Recruiter. Today, we're going to be interviewing Stephen Rothberg, who is the president and founder of College Recruiter. We want to ask Stephen today about the candidate and recruiter experience, which we hear a lot from, whether the candidate, what are they thinking about the application process, and from the recruiter who has concerns that people may start the application, but they don't complete. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So Stephen, my first question to you is, first of all, how do candidates prefer to apply for a job? Well, they definitely prefer to apply for a job in whatever way they're going to get the job. <laughs> so, you know, I think that applying for a job has never been an easy thing. Um, you know, way back decades ago, you typically saw a help wanted sign outside of a outside of a shop or maybe a classified ad in the newspaper. Um, if the help wanted sign was outside the shop and you would physically go in and fill in an application, there was a pretty good chance that right then and there you were going to have a brief meeting, even for two minutes. With the, with the hiring manager, the store owner, or, or whatever, and, and you could get some instant feedback. Um, you know, oh, sorry, you know, we're not looking for someone like you, or yeah, you know what, I'm definitely interested, let's talk right now, the store is, the store is kind of uh, not terribly busy, so you can have kind of an on-the-spot interview. That tends to be incredibly rare today, even, even with retail stores. They still almost all want you to go through um, filling in a formal application online. Some of that's legal. Um, it allows them to defend themselves against uh, charges that maybe they're illegally discriminating against women or minorities or people with disabilities or whatever. Um, and some of it's just they get so many applications that it's just really hard for them to deal with with paper applications or candidates coming in on the spot. Um, almost every larger employer um, dozens of employees, hundreds for sure, thousands or tens of thousands. They almost have what are called, um, almost all have what are called applicant tracking systems, mm -hmm. which is an, um, an online database where you go to a website, you fill in the application form. Um, typically, you're going to upload a resume, maybe copy and paste it. You hit the submit button, and then unfortunately, more times than not, you go into a black hole. Um, some of the organizations that um, really pay attention to the candidate experience, what the candidates want, um, have come to realize that more than anything else, candidates really want to apply to an employer that provides them with a roadmap. Um, this is our process. These are the five steps that we follow in before we hire someone. This is how those steps work. You know, first some uh, recruiter is going to review your resume and if she thinks it's good then she's going to send it over to the hiring manager. The hiring manager is usually your boss or the person who would be your boss. If she thinks it's good then you'll be called in for um, a formal sit-down interview with your hiring manager, the recruiter, maybe a couple of other people. Um, other candidates like you will also be called in. There might be three, four, five people and then they'll make um, a decision. You might have a second interview for the couple of finalists, and then they'll they'll let you know. And, and the really great organizations will actually commit to a timeline. Um, we will review your resume within five business days. You will hear from us within two business days of that. Um, you will be um, if if we want to interview you, we will set up an interview within three business days, or or whatever the timeline is that works for the employer. Um, most of those employers that really pay attention to the candidate experience will give you some really good guidance um, with with those estimations. If they think it's going to take them three business days, they'll tell you five uh, because that way, even if their process breaks down a little bit, you're not thinking that they're late. So they contact you on the fourth day. They were hoping for the third. They contact you on the fourth. You weren't expecting them till the fifth. So you're happy. Um, so I think that candidates, more than anything else, really want to be treated with respect. They, they're spending a lot of time. They are putting themselves into an uncomfortable position where they're kind of having to sell themselves, where they're having to put themselves out there. They're afraid of rejection. It's just like in high school if you ask somebody to dance. Um, you like them. You don't know if they like you. Right. Even if they do like you, you don't know if they've already asked somebody else, mm -hmm. um, kind of like an employer who's already hired someone else. Um, so we're all, we're all afraid of rejection to an extent, but the more that that employer can kind of walk you through, this is what we do, and these are the, uh, the timelines, that's a really great thing. And I think the other thing that candidates really, really want, Andrea, is to get feedback. Um, if you're not the right person for whatever reason, 
you know, say so. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, hey, hey, you know, Andrea, you're great at this and you're great at this and great at this. But really, we were looking for a nuclear physicist with 10 years of experience. Mm-hmm. I don't see that on your resume. So I'm sorry, we cannot consider you for this position. Employers are afraid of being truthful with, with candidates, and, and they shouldn't be. Um, you're, you're, you know, you're never going to lose a lawsuit because you've been truthful That's um, with, with a candidate. But you definitely will get sued if you are lying to candidates or if you treat them like jerks. Um, people get upset when they get treated like, by jer- like jerks, and that's why, that's why they sue. Got it. Got it. Well, one of the things that employers talk about a lot is students or candidates, they'll begin the application process, but they don't complete. So why aren't candidates completing the application process? Yeah, you know, more than anything else, I think it's a reflection on the application process, not on the candidate. Sure. Um, I think we've all been there where we go to um, one employer's application process and they ask you for your basic contact information first name, last name, street address, city, state, zip code, phone number. Um, I still see some with multiple fields. What's your home phone number? What's your cell phone number? And especially for young adults, they do not have two different numbers. Mm -hmm. So there's a a bit of a problem there. But Mm -hmm. typically the candidates just put the same phone number into both fields and so they can move on. But it still kind of looks a little bit goofy. That's going to cost them some candidates who say, hey, if you don't realize that I – that I and all of my friends only have one phone number, I'm probably not all that interested in you hmm. um, if you're so out of touch. So that's one area where we see some drop-off. Um, then you get into the um, upload your resume. Um, now, if the candidate is on a desktop or laptop, they typically have a resume, Word document, PDF, whatever. But if you're applying on a mobile phone, how many people have a resume saved to their mobile phone? They just don't. Um, some people will have that resume saved to um, services like Dropbox or Google Drive, or they'll have a good LinkedIn profile that has a really professional, not just an account, but a really fleshed out account with all their experience and whatever, and then they can apply with a mobile. Um, but for, you know, for the other 95% of candidates out there, they just don't even know how to do that. They don't know that they can do that. So. Um, about half of the job searches right now are being done on mobile devices, and that means that employers are losing about half of those candidates. Wow. So they're starting the application because they'll type in their name and their address and their email address, and then they'll get to that question, upload your resume, and they give up. So that's a, that's a huge drop-off right there. Um, employers would be smart to ask for the resume at a later stage. So get somebody to start the application and hit the continue button so that the resume gets into pro- – so that the application gets into process, the basic contact information. And then on the next page, ask for the resume. And if they don't have a resume or they can't a- um, access one, then there should be an option there that basically says, please send me an email to remind me to complete the application when I have a resume available. So the candidate can just hit that button. Kick, the employer already has their email address. They don't have to ask for the email address. Kicks out an email to the candidate. When the candidate gets home that evening, three days later, and they have some time, they can go to their desktop computer and upload a resume. Um, another big reason we see drop-off is, is just too many questions um, and sometimes inappropriate questions. Um, I saw an application page yesterday, the day before. The first question was first name. second question was last name. Third question was social security number. Wow. There's no way, no right. way That's that I right. would enter a social security number into some employer site. They absolutely don't need it at that stage. If they get 200 applications for that job and they hire one person, they definitely need a social security number from one person. They do not need that number for the other 199 people. It's mm-hmm. crazy that employers are asking for that at that point because now they have to safeguard that information. Mm-hmm. They have to be very careful about who can access it and if they're hacked, they're responsible for that. Right. Um, so they just, they absolutely should not be asking for social security at that point. And you see a huge drop off. Um, you also see a huge drop off when employers ask for date of birth. Why do they need to know how old you are? Now, if you're going to be a model or you're going to be acting in a TV show or something like that, and you're filling in an online, online application, then yeah, they need to know if you're 50 or 20. Do you fit the character? I get that. But if you're going to be an accountant, it's just not relevant. 
how old you are. It's illegal in, 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 in most cases, so they should not be asking for that information. Um, you see employers that put all applicants through an assessment before they can even apply. And that, to me, is kind of backwards. Get people to apply and then have them go through an assessment. Um, it can all be automated. I hear employers saying, well, we want to have them be assessed before they apply because that way our recruiters save time. We don't have to be reviewing resumes for people who would not pass the assessment. That's fair, but have them apply and then automatically ask them to go through the assessment and then only have your recruiters review the people who have gone through the application process and the assessment process, then your recruiter. So, you know, you can kind of break those up into different stages. Um, and that way, if you apply but do not complete the application, their automated system can hit an email or send an email out to you. Hey, Andrea, you applied yesterday, but you have not yet completed the assessment. We need you to complete the online assessment before our recruiter can review your application. And when our recruiter reviews your application, they will get back to you within five business days, blah, 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 blah. Right, right. So I've heard this term a lot, um, so maybe you can help define it. What exactly is the recruiter experience? Uh, recruiter experience is something um, that we are trying to pay a lot more attention to. I think we've been mostly successful. We can always get better at everything, right? Everybody right. can get better at everything. But the recruiter experience to us is kind of the flip side of the candidate experience um, and, and not inconsistent. You don't have to sacrifice the candidate experience to have a good recruiter experience. You don't have to sacrifice the recruiter experience to have a good candidate experience. But it's basically, for the recruiter, they want quality information um, in um, efficiently, so, so effective and efficient. So in other words, if you get 200 people applying to a job, the recruiter should not have to review 200 applications to find the 20 that are really good. That would be a bad recruiter experience. They're wasting time on reviewing applications from people who are mostly unqualified. Mm -hmm. So the application process, the online application process, should weed some of those unqualified candidates out. And again, have them apply, then do the assessment, then have the recruiter look. But you know, if, if it's a great candidate, but you need to be, you legally need to be a U.S. citizen, like if you're working for an intelligence agency or something or the Department of Defense, you legally have to be a U.S. citizen for that. So if somebody applies from Bangladesh, you know, and they're not a U.S. citizen, the recruiter should never see that application. But a lot, in a lot of companies, they do. They, they just, they have to go through every one of those applications and spend 30 seconds on each of them to try to figure out which ones are highly qualified and which ones aren't before they even start to talk to the candidates. Another thing that, that we try to pay a lot of attention to even before that point is recruiters should not have to spend a lot of time um, posting ads or, or advertising job openings. Um, a lot of job boards, if, if a company has say 200 positions that are open, somebody at the company has to go in and manually type in every single one of those job postings. They'll copy and paste the job title, they'll copy and paste the job description over and over and over again, and that might take, well, for sure five minutes. It could take 10 or 15 minutes per job times 200 jobs. Mm -hmm. And they need to do that every month because job postings typically run for 30 days. I don't think that most candidates have any idea um, how much time is spent there. Um, what we do and what a lot of other sites are doing now is that we scrape or wrap we basically go out fully automated, copy all the postings from the employer's website, and then only runs the, run the ones on our site that they want to run. That's a positive recruiter experience because they can spend their time recruiting, mm -hmm. talking to candidates, rather than being, you know, administrative assistants and typing. Correct. Um, Correct. So I think you know the recruiter experience is again. I think it's very similar to the candidate experience. It's it's allowing people to spend their time where their time is most productive rather than just doing a bunch of busy work. 
totally agree and couldn't agree more. So maybe, Stephen, you'll come back and we'll kind of take these both of these topics and go into a more in-depth conversation. And maybe you can share some of the best practices as it relates to the recruiter and the candidate experience. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will be back in touch with you real soon. Have a great day. Thank you, Andrea.